Hi guys, welcome to another video on Tech with Shakul. So if you're following my system design series, in the last video I told you about what is a server and more importantly why is there even a need for any such thing. So we'll move a step forward and discuss about server architecture. Now there are two basic models which are used while designing a server. So the one, first one is monolithic architecture. The second is microservice architecture. Now a monolithic, as the name suggests, mono means one. And lithic, because I'm a geologist, and I've been told for five years that lithic means rock. Now this is one big piece of rock. So this, this application will be a one big chunk, okay? Whereas microservices, micro means small. So this is a group of small services. So the application here, as opposed to microservice, a monolithic which was a big piece his is divided into small groups of small services okay now uh, a very common question asked in most of the system design interviews is what is the fundamental difference between monolithic and microservice application now i can straight up draw a line and write one and two what are the differences between this and this and you will able to understand but what i'll do is I'll come up with an application, I'll design an application and I'll design it in the monolithic way. Because 10 years from now, 10 years ago, there was nothing known as microservices. Everything, every application was built in monolithic way. So we'll come up with a monolithic code base and then we'll see what are the problems with this and then swiftly move it to the microservice and, uh, and see if we can fix those problems or not. So the application we'll build today will be an e-wallet. So this will be my e-wallet and I don't want to do any fancy stuff. I'll do basic things of sending money, adding money to my wallet and viewing my transaction. So this I think so are the basic three things which, I'm, which I want my wallet to do. So let's say we have a monolithic architecture and this is the business logic. So we start to write the send button. Now send button, the first task is to gather the information. Gathering information as in what uh, amount to be sent, which is the receiver's address like what is the uh, you know account number and all of that so that gathering of info which payment gateway to use so all of this will happen in the gather info next up when the user presses send what i need to do is i need to call for an authorization so based on what uh, payment gateway is used if it's a credit card or if it's an HDFC credit card or something like that so we'll use an uh, authorization so this is basically OTP and all once the OTP and all is done then I'll update the database so this update of DB is basically one my wallet should be reflected that this amount is debited from yours and my transaction table should be updated that so and so transaction was made on this date so this is pretty much my send logic right this will complete my send logic. Now, similarly, I'll write something for add. Add will have uh, like gather information, similar to what I did in send. I'll gather info as to what money, how much money to add, which payment gateway. Then I need to make an authorization based on the payment gateway. Then again, an update DB. So this will be again the wallet and the transaction. Both of these update will happen. Now this is my add. Now let's say view, view will be a very basic DB call. So this and this I'll only call the DB and reflect what is happening in the transaction table. I'm updating the transa transaction table every time. So I'll just view that in the view transaction. So this I have coded my uh, e-wallet in, in the most basic code base. I can easily explain it to any, any developer. So this is my monolithic. The first point is this is an easy way to code. So I can easily code it. I, I, I was able to do it in five minutes. So I can explain it to anybody in, in five minutes. So this was easy to code. Now, is there a problem with this? Why did we move to microservices? Why there was a transition there? Uh, can you see any problem? So the first problem that I can see is, I need to write this code again and again. Uh, let's say I come up with another service which had the same flow of gathering information, then authorization, then update. So I need to write that flow again. So code reusability. Code reusability is a problem here. I'm not able to reuse the code that I've written. And since everything is happening in a chain, 
this is triggering this then this is getting triggered by the authorization so everything is happening like a chain now in a chain what is the problem let's let imagine a, a machine which has like wheels so you can all you have all seen this animation right we we have wheels this moves this way then this moves and then this moves so to uh, function all the uh, the whole machine we need every block to move right now let's say there was some error in this and it stopped moving so what i'll do is i'll stop the machine i'll fix this error then i'll rerun the entire setup so that every wheel starts to move similarly here if there is any error in the authorization part i need to fix this here then i need to redeploy the entire setup i need to fix this change here as well as well as here because i am not reusing the code so any change will stop the entire thing and we need to redeploy the entire setup so there is tightly coupling happening tightly coupled application everything is so coupled if i'm working on authorization i need to know what is work what is getting happened in the gather info because this is triggering the authorization i need to know what is happening on the update db because i have to trigger that so everything is very tightly coupled over here so these are the two basic cons in a monolithic application this is what led to the development of what is known as soa service oriented architecture now service oriented architecture what we did was we tried to uh, make these services as loosely coupled we created independent independent services here so there was one service which was created as auth one created as gather info one in one was created as update db so these were different services and both add and send will use these services every time i press add i will use authorization then i'll use gather then i'll use update what did this did was it first of all made my code reusable i can reuse the same service in the send button also okay so this made my code reusable I also everything is loosely coupled a bunch of coders can work work here a bunch of coders can work here so they don't need to understand the entire flow they can work on independent services so both of my cons were solved in the service oriented architecture but still there was one problem the problem was all of this was requesting a sim same db so any authorization any read request in the authorization was made into the same db any gather info was written to the same db any update on the db was made on the same db so they are using all the services in this are using the same database now this database is the most busiest man in the in the entire organization it is so busy it doesn't have any time so it has getting a lot of read request write request and it is not able to prioritize its work now what i mean by prioritize is now let's say for a businessman i need my send and add to work seamlessly it should not have even a single second of delay whereas i can manage a small latency in my view let's say i was using google pay okay and if i click check balance and it didn't respond for 2 seconds or 3 seconds to main utna pareshan nahi hota hu main main itna ghabra nahi jata hu ekdam se but jab main paise bhej raha hu when i'm sending the money and there is a 2 second delay or 3 second delay and and the page is not loading i get worried right so as a business user i can't have a delay in my send and add whereas i can have a delay in view so prioritizing the view request or prioritizing the uh, prioritizing the send and add should be the function of the db but since all the services are using the same db their prioritization cannot happen so that's why we move to what is known as modern day microservice architecture now with microservices what we created was not just independent we created autonomous services so these autonomous services what they were let's say this is an authorization this is and uh, gather info service there is an update db service what i did i did attach another a local db to this authorization similarly i attached a local database to this i attach another database to this and i have another service which keeps these databases into sync so what my problem of having a single database is now solved now this is a separate world in all together this doesn't concern what is happening in the gather because it has its own database it has its own dependencies everything is of its own ye wo bachelor hai jo societies mein nahi rehte ki unko koi farak nahi padta ki kya ho raha hai unko nahi pata diwali sammelan mein kya ho raha hai unko to invite bhi nahi karte hain to ye wo bachelor hai isko kuch nahi 
पता था कि बाकी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में क्या रहे दिस इज एन ऑटोनोमस बॉडी नाउ दिस कैन बी कोडेड इन जावा इसको मैं जावा में कोड कर सकता हूँ इसको मैं सी प्लस प्लस में कोड कर सकता हूँ इसको मैं पाइथन में कोड कर सकता हूँ आई कैन हैव दैट मर्स ऑटोनोमिटी इन बिटवीन द सर्विसेज एज वेल यहाँ पे आई वॉज टाइटली कपल्ड आई हैड टू डिफाइन अ टेक्स टैग अ डिफाइंड टैक्स टेक्स टैग वॉज यूज and i can't change that text tag in the let's say i added a feature tomorrow i can't have that in you know python because the dependency of the entire thing is java if i have coded this in java i will keep coding all the services in java so there was a defined text tag whereas here i can have any kind of loosely coupled architecture over here i can code this in java this in the so this is the basic difference between now uh, there are a couple of other things like scalability now what is scalability scalability is now let's say my analytics team it sent uh, told me that boss there is a high hit rate on your send button whereas a very low hit rate on uh, your view button uh, meaning that more people are pressing send rather than view button okay so what i want to do is i want to give more compute to send naturally right because send is getting used more so i can't do that in monolithic application for monolithic to scale i need to scale it as a whole one big piece remember so if i have to scale this i need to scale all the services all the application together that includes a db that includes every service so scaling independent services is not possible scaling is difficult over in here whereas scaling autonomously is very easy over here also i can't monitor independent services over here let's say if i want to monitor that what is the hit rate on authorization or whatever is the latency in authorization service also all those kpis right all those kpi monitoring i can't do for uh, independent services in the monolithic i can do that monitoring in this because this is an autonomous body now this doesn't have a con that's not i'm not what i'm saying all these services they talk to each other over phone calls those phone calls are basically known as api services api calls so that api call is getting over the network any any call is getting over the network has some latency involved to it because network can be congested suppose i am i have 50 different services so i need to call 50 different apis that can cause to congestion so i can have i will have a network latency here whereas this one i had a single body everything is in inside one big piece of code so there is no latency latency is not possible in monolithic architecture there is no kind of latency here so uh, with this we understood now uh, if uh, as i told you that this gets deployed as one big piece and here we can deploy it has single pieces and this service can de be deployed in one piece suppose i made some changes in the authorization code some bunch of coders are working on a saturday and they are working on this authorization so they don't need to wait for other service to get deployed they can independently deploy this so parallel deployment is one of the very great features which microservices brought so parallel deployment i can parallelly deploy different services where as here i need to have a deployment cycle a small change in any of the services cannot be deployed because it will take a lot of time and resource to get deployed so i need to come up with cycles of deployment here whereas there i can have a continuous deployment continuous parallel deployment can be possible in microservices so these are the basic fundamental differences between monolithic and microservices but this created a bias right i think so you you are favoring towards the monolithic uh, favoring towards the microservices architecture that's not true actually a lot of companies are still using monolithic because the ease of deployment ease of way of code is still with the monolithic application there i am creating a lot of overheads with these databases and independent uh, services and independent environments i'm creating a lot of overhead over here but if i have to code a small application a very small application i will still prefer monolithic companies like stack exchange are still using monolithic application 
it, there's a company called Etsy, which is a uh, e-commerce, a very famous e-commerce startup in uh, America. So it still uses monolithic application. It's not that monolithic has died down. It's just that it is very good for small piece of code, small bunch of applications. There is no latency, which is a very good factor in monolithic. As opposed, microservices are used by more uh, more complex architectures like Netflix and all of this, which can which can have you know different different uh, uh, services like authorization and other things so they use complex uh, architecture diagrams like microservices i hope i was able to explain to you what are the fundamental differences between both of these and you will be able to crack that interview so keep watching and stay tuned